Next, we'll look at median, mode, and range. These concepts occur less frequently on the GI compared to the average, uh, but when they do occur, the problems are slightly harder. So let's first look at what these quantities mean. Uh, and the best way to do is to look at an example. So here we have a series of data points, uh, and we'll calculate these quantities for this uh, series. But before we do that, we have to arrange these from in an increasing order. So, so going from the lowest to the largest number. And this is important as you will see when we calculate uh, these, uh, these uh, specific quantities. So, so let's rearrange this. And the smallest we have is 5. Then we have a 10, 15, 19, 20, 20, 20, we have two times, then we have 30, then we have 50, and then we have 60. Okay. All right, so we have arranged from in an increasing order. Let's first find the mode, which is the easiest, the so mode. Uh, mode is the number that occurs most frequently in the list. So here, the most frequently occurring number is 20. It appears two times, so that's the mode. Very simple. The number that occurs most frequently right let's then go to range range is just the difference between the highest or the largest and the smallest number simple so largest here is 60 take out 5 which is the lowest you get a range of 55 very simple it's just the difference between the largest and the lowest. So difference between, this is my shorthand for between, BW, difference between largest and smallest numbers. Right? Okay, let's look at median. So median is the number that is in between. Okay? And it's important that your series is organized from lowest to highest, okay? Which we have done here. So here, let's look at what's the n. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. n is nine, which is r, which makes it very easy to pick the middle number. So the middle number is actually the fifth number. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth number, right? You have four numbers on the left of this and four numbers on the right. So 20 is the middle number median is simply 20 so median is the middle number now one scenario where you have to be careful is when your n is even when n is even your median is calculated slightly different because you cannot easily pick a middle number so let's say we have this simpler data set um, 5 10 15 and 20 okay now here my n is 4, which is even. Now you can't pick a middle number here, right? Uh, you have four numbers, there's nothing in the middle. So what you do is you pick the two numbers that occur kind of in the middle like this. So numbers uh, second and third, and you take the average of that. So, so the median in this case is 10 plus 15 divided by 2 which would be 25 divided by 2, which is 12 and a half, right? Again, okay. so if it's even, you pick the two middle numbers. Since they cannot be one middle number, uh, you pick the two and you take the average. So, so just to reiterate the point, let's say we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six numbers, your n is even. If you want to calculate the median, you will pick 3 and 4 and you will take its average. So the median here would be 3 plus 4 divided by 2, which is 7 over 2, 3 and a half. Simple. Okay, odd, you pick the middle number, even, you pick the two middle numbers and take a average. And you get your medians. Okay, as I said before, GRE would never ask you directly to calculate these quantities. It will trick you, make your life harder, trick you. Okay, we have to be smart about applying these concepts. Here is a GRE problem, which is tricky. Let's try to attempt it. X and Y are two sets. Okay, X and Y are two sets of numbers. Range of K elements from X is 
okay range remember range of n elements from y is 9.5 okay let's write this down so k element from x the range is 21.5 n elements from y the average the range is 9.5 and the question is asking what is the minimum important here minimum range of set containing k plus n elements <coughs> excuse me okay so so the so question wants to answer if you combine this these elements that were picked from the two sets what would be the minimum range in that case all right interesting question uh, so first of all to reiterate what a range means uh, it's just the difference between the biggest and the smallest number in a set all right so they say the range for k element from x is 21.5 now there are three scenarios here so let's look at these two scenarios one by one. So the first scenario, let me represent the range by this line. So let's say this is my k set, right? The the k element in whose range is 21.5. Okay. So you have your lower bound and your upper bound. The difference between those two is 21.5. So that's for k elements. Now for n elements the range is 9.5 okay again you will have a lower bound and an upper bound right so one scenario is that this n elements they are exactly they fall exactly within the k elements whose range is 21.5 so how could that happen let's pick numbers so let's say for k the the lowest number in k elements is 0.5 and the highest is 22 See, the difference of these two numbers is 21.5. Okay, so we satisfy the condition that the range is 21.5. Let's do the similar process for n element whose range is 9.5. How about I pick 5.5 to be the lower bound and 15 to be the upper bound. Again, the difference of these two is the range given the problem for n element, 9.5. All right, so, so you see that the n elements with range this fall exactly we fall within uh, these two numbers from the k element right 0. 0.5 to 25 so if this case if I combine these two what would my range be well it would be the range your smallest number is still 0. 0.5 your biggest number is still 22 so the range would be 21.5 okay so this is one scenario where n falls within k your n elements fall within k elements okay so the range is the range of k so that's one uh, one scenario the other scenario is where actually n falls outside k so so if i pick a number line let's say this is my zero point maybe my k elements are here all right and my n elements they don't overlap at all and they are somewhere here in this case my range would be i'll pick the lowest number which would be this my range for n plus k element so n plus k elements the lowest would be here the biggest would be here and range would definitely be greater than the range of k right of k elements so the range would definitely be greater than 21.5 so we can take this this quantity out right because this is definitely greater than case one where the range was 21.5 now the third scenario is where you have some overlap not complete overlap but some overlap right so let's look at that uh, so again I'll draw the number line so I have my zero let's say my k is here the k elements are here right and the n elements <coughs> they kind of start before the highest here uh, highest in the k and they go something like that right oops this is my n elements this is my k elements so you have some overlap happening in this region right 
Okay, if I calculate the range of n plus k in this scenario, my lowest is here, my highest is here, and again, the range in this case would be greater than 21.5, right? Because see, my highest has moved from here to here, right? So in this case, again, the range will be greater than 21.5. So in these three scenarios, we have proved that the smallest range that's possible is 21.5, okay? Which is actually the answer. Um, but you should satisfy yourself completely that this, these three are, in, are the only scenarios possible. Uh, either your, your, your n plus k range, or, or let me say, either you, your n falls within k, or your n falls outside of k, or there's some overlap. Not complete, but some overlap, okay, these two scenarios. And the only possible, or the, or the minimum range that's possible is in the first scenario, okay. So the answer here would be 21.5 is the minimum range possible. Definitely one of the harder questions on GRE, but if you can get this concept down, you'll be very in a very good shape.